Now, we've got a bit of a gear change here, actually. The number of people killed with a knife in England and Wales has reached its highest level since records began. According to the Office for National Statistics, there were 282 homicides committed with a knife in the year to March 2022, a 19% increase on the previous 12 months. In England and Wales, stabbings now make up about 4 in 10 homicides, comprising murder, manslaughter and infanticide. Joining me now to discuss this is former youth intervention officer and writer Nick Buckley and the chair of the Haringey Independent Stop and Search Monitoring Group, Ken Hines, here in the studio. Thank you very much indeed. Ken, there have been calls for more stop and search. Is that the answer? Definitely not. Um, don't get me, stop and search has a place, but the place is not for taking knives and guns off our street. Because if that was the case, my thing is simply, why is it consistently less than 5% a month of stop and search um, that takes knives and guns off our street? People say one knife off our street is a result. But when you think about 95% of the people who are stopped and haven't got a, a, a knife on them, is the damage that could be done on those young people. We call it being stopped and scarred. So the very same people who you can get the intel in, you're now actually um, making them more uh, mm. a, um, less likely to come and give you the intel that but you need. Ken, people would ask that that's, uh, you know, if it, if it stops one death, if it stops one fatal stabbing, then it's worth it, even if it does... Um, offend people. But I can say just simply this. I'm part of a grassroots group called uh, Communities Against Violence and we end up taking more knives off our streets. And the difference between what, when we take a knife off a street of a youngster, they're less likely to go and rearm <laughs> themselves as opposed to when the police take it off, the, off, a, off a youngster. Because when the police take it off a youngster, he's generally telling me he's, more, he's carrying it because to safeguard himself. So that's not dealing with the underlying issue. And the simple fact is, he, he, they tell me they must prefer to be caught by the police with a knife mm -hmm. than be caught by their opposition without it. Because one will mean being judged by 12 of his peers and the other might mean carrying to his grave by six. That's the issue we've got. Nick, what do, what do you think? I was speaking to Norman Brennan yesterday. He's a retired police officer. He said we need tougher penalties and more stop and search. So quite different from what Ken was saying there. Ken has some good points. I'll address Ken's points in a minute. Um, he's not wrong in lots of what he said there. We need, we need to identify what the problem is. We call it knife crime. But as those new stats have just shown us, it's not all about crime on the streets. So some of that will be domestic. Some of it will be infanticide, killing your own children. So it, it depends what part of knife crime we're looking at. If, so at the moment, we're talking about knife crime on the streets, which, which everyone's afraid of, and rightly so. We need to look at prevention, early intervention, and enforcement. Enforcement is the bit that we're not doing anymore now. So stop and search has been dramatically reduced, and at the same time, knife crime has dramatically shot up. It gets very political um, when we're talking about stop and search, but the answer to this is to go back to the people that live in those areas. I'm a big believer in giving the power back to the people that live in those areas. And we say to them, in this area, here's your standard on knife crime and offences on the streets. Do you want more stop and search? Do you want the police to stop more of your young children, of your children who live here, to be stopped and searched? And we, we take that on board of what those local communities say. Now, going back to some of the points Ken said, he's right. When you stop and search in young people, it, it, it's not nice. They feel slighted. He's also correct. He's also correct when he says a young person would rather be caught by the police with a knife than get caught by the other gang without a knife. And is that how do we address this? We address this by making everybody understand that the risk of you getting caught on the streets with a knife is extremely likely. That's yeah. how we stop people carrying knives. Ken, I, I saw you shaking shaking your head there. What what did you want to come back on? Uh, seriously, when you say you're giving it to the residents to tell them, uh, to ask them what they want to do, they want more stop and search, of course they do so. But I'll tell you what, I don't see those residents on the ground where we're working and interact with the young people. But what I do see is that they're complaining all the time. If they see a group of youngsters, they're calling them a gang. And these youngsters are just maybe just after school meeting outside a chicken shop. And all they're just doing is being excited 
excitable and they're not causing a problem. My thing is simply this, why alienate those? The group, what we're doing in, on the ground is that we're showing them kindness and interacting with them and, t and giving them um, positive activities that, that take them away from the drug dealers and make them more likely to come and engage with us. My thing is simply this, we've also had a period of COVID, which means people have been locked away for a long time. And we also got this thing about where people, where the parents now are juggling whether to pay the gas and the electric as, a, as opposed to put bread, and, bread on the table. So when we've got these things going on, we just can't go in there and, and have a blunt instrument as to say we can arrest our way out of it. It's not going to happen and it's not going to work. It's been tried for 40 years and you know what? We're getting nowhere with it. We need more transparency on stop and search. That's what we need. Yeah. We know accountability. Don't tell us that stop and search is great for doing X, Y and Z, but you can't back it up that, or the figures don't back well, it up. Well, Nick, what do, you, what, do you make, what do you make of that? Because a lot of people who are former police officers, working police officers, say stop and search does work. They get knives out of people's hands, mostly young men. Surely then, you know, it's, it's one of those things that has to be done. Stop and search does work. If you look at the stats on when Theresa May introduced her policy of heavily reducing stop and search, the following year up to today, so she stopped it in, she reduced it in about 2012, so it kicked in about 2013. From 2013 today, knife crime has consistently risen every single year dramatically, and that's a direct result of heavily reducing stop and search. They are correlated, they are connected. Stop and search isn't the only tool we should use. It's not, we have a problem, let's go on the streets and stop and search everybody. It's one tool that we have. We need education, we need early intervention, we need young people understanding the consequences of their action. And something we don't do in neighborhoods is when we catch somebody with a knife and we prosecute them, that name and that picture should be plastered all over the area okay. saying, this is what happens when, you ca when we catch you with a knife, this is what happens. Because at the moment, okay. Young people where I work don't even know, please stop people and searching mm. for knives. Can, 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 you, sorry, can you imagine showing a young person's face, plot it out there because he's been carrying a knife? You're, making, you're gonna make him more a target for others to step up and say, well, we know that he's possibly carrying a knife, so if I'm gonna have any kind of conflict with him, I'm gonna stab him up first before giving him a chance to take out his knife. Well, you're putting him more point. at danger. That, that, that right. is a good point, but also it's often said, this debate often comes down to whether people think stop and search is racist because if you look at towns like London, unfortunately, you're more likely to Nine be killed times by a knife if you're, black a young, man. if you're a young black man and you're also more likely to be a perpetrator. So surely, if you're going to stop and search the right people, it may well be that you end up stopping more black young men um, than... Uh, and, and, and young black men may be offended. Innocent uh, black men. Innocent black men will be offended, obviously. And I can't imagine what it's like being stopped and searched. I know I would hate it. But surely it's a price worth paying, Ken, if it stops people dying. Personally, I, I believe, one thing I would agree with, we need tougher sentencing, because I'm fed up that when these young people do get caught with a knife, they get slapped on the wrist, and then, so therefore, they, it emboldens them. And not only emboldens them, it emboldens their friends. I believe that if, you know, for every inch of the knife that you're caught with, you should be given a year. And let's forget parole in that situation. So I want to be tough on it, but let's be tough. And, 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 and that would make an imprint straight away. But the other thing, if you're not going to do so, Let's look at other avenues to see how we can better engage dealing with the emotional trauma that a lot of us is carrying and giving them some sort of tools to actually recognise that trauma and to stop it from escalating into that red mist. And, um, Nick, I, I think it's, it's worth noting, and this is something that a lot of people will also raise when we're talking about the issue of knife crime, the problem of family breakdown, problem of um, deprivation, problem of not having a support system at home, if you've got that, you're highly unlikely to go out and carry a knife. All those things have a connection to this, but the, fatherlessness is the biggest problem we have in the UK. It's, it's at the heart of all our social problems, the lack of fathers in the home. Um, poverty? No, I, I reject poverty has much to do with knife crime and crime in general, because you can find lots of pockets of poor people who don't commit crime. Um, if we're looking at the race angle it to probably this, doesn't help though pardon it probably doesn't help though it lots of things 
don't help. TV, social media doesn't help. Um, but the, I, I reject that they're that connected. Um, it's family breakdown. It's it's living in an area that has no aspiration, where you're surrounded by criminality, where you see no future, where it seems to be a normal way of life, um, failing education, you're not getting the guidance yeah. at home. All these things create poor citizens. They all don't go into crime and all don't go into knife crime, but it's not the best start in yeah. life. No, it's that's not the, the best That's start. where the prevention and early intervention needs to be happening there. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Thank you very much indeed. We're going to have to end, end the conversation there. And that was Nick Buckley um, and the chair of the Harringay Independent Stop and Search Monitoring Group, Ken Hines, with us. Thank you very much indeed for coming in to discuss that.